16 cores, 32 gigs of memory, 6 terabytes flash, PCI Express 4. You're going to want to stay tuned until after the bump. Slager, you know the name, now own the case. No, I just, you, you probably don't know the name. That's why we're doing this video. It's the little things, look. That's insane. These are slot covers made out of steel. Steel. So Slager makes industrial cases and they're trying the whole, okay, I mean, if people are into high-end cases, let's see what we can do. And this, this is what caught my attention. Well, the first thing that caught my attention actually was an ITX case that legit supports two PCI Express expansion slots. So some motherboards support bifurcation on their PCI Express. I've got a Gigabyte Aorus X570. This has got dual NVMe support and we've got our X16 slot here. You can plug the X16 slot in and this case will give you through its cable two X8 slots. Now this cable, I've already tested it, that's why we've got fingerprints and stuff like that on the case. But we're gonna do a build with this. 16 cores of madness. The 3950X and an ITX machine with a handle? Yes. Come. <laughs> Let's do this. So the first thing that you need to understand is that you don't have to get a dual plexiglass sides. And, and in fact, generally I wouldn't recommend that because you're gonna put a high-end build in this. We want it to breathe. We want it to breathe really well. But I wanted to show you so you got some idea. You don't have a lot of clearance on the motherboard side. You pretty much have to use an, an all-in-one cooler with this case, and you can't use a tall one at that. I've got the Deep Cool Captain 240. This is a seriously underrated cooler. The Deep Cool uh, coolers in terms of like their heat dissipation capacity. It's got a little bit of a reservoir on top of the CPU and these are really really good coolers for the money. Unfortunately, there's not physically enough room in the case to use it as it is. You're going to be relegated to a Corsair 240 millimeter cooler. This is I think the H110i or H100i. It's a 240 millimeter cooler that I happen to have on hand. It's still a good cooler. It's a really good cooler. It is outperformed by the deep cool cooler but it's still a good cooler and it's plenty good enough for the 3950X. For the power supply, I've got the uh, Seasonic Focus fully modular. This is SFX L, L means slightly longer, but there's plenty of room in this case. It's modular, so there's not gonna be any extra cables. That works really well. The bottom of the case and the top of the case are vented. And in the accessories online, you can order it with lots of different accessories. So when Sliger reached out, I was like, hey, send me all the accessories. So they sent me all of the accessories. This finish, is obsidian gray, but it's also available in slate black. So if you want to uh, obsidian black all the things, you totally can. Again, this, these are the windowed side panels, which I'm going to now pack away, but solid and vented are an option. There are also drive mounting options for mounting drives in the bottom of the case. In addition to having the, uh, you know, the dual fan mounts in the bottom, uh, you can also, you know, issue a fan and actually have a three and a half inch drive mount or up to four two and a half inch SSDs. And that's what this little bracket is. It just mounts down there in the bottom and then you can have some two and a half inch SSDs, which is a good thing because our motherboard has four SATA ports. So I could go nuts adding four SATA drives here. So internally, we've got a pretty decent build layout overall. Got a setup here where we can put the motherboard uh, over here and the power supply here. And so that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Well, now we've run into our first issue with the build. This is a, uh, an output port. There's actually two output ports for a custom loop radiator or anything that you might run for custom loop cooling where the radiator is external. And with the plug installed, it won't clear the motherboard, the corner of the motherboard. It's so close. Now I can just get a little pair of pliers and cut out a corner of this, of the round thing, shove it back in there and be fine. It's just a minor, minor thing that you can fix if you've got a pair of uh, angle cutters. Now for your power supply, the SFXL does give you a little less wiggle room. I've routed my uh, PCI Express power cables, you know, sort of by the side here, which will give me a little bit of flexibility on the other side with how they're routed. And then I've put the motherboard cables sort of 
stuffed here at the bottom. Now this configuration has one USB type C and one USB type A. The, both of those use a standard five gigabit 30 pin connector. So that 30 pin connector is wired to both of these USB ports, one type U USB C and one type A. So this case doesn't have a USB 10 gigabit type C connector just in case you were wondering about that. Although that might be one of the configuration options on the website. That's something that's changing all the time. So be sure to check that on the website. And then of course I've got the front panel HD audio connections as well. So the front pops off, gives you that, that lovely front, lovely naked front. You can see that we've got room for two more three and a half inch bays here on the inside. While I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and route my PCI Express power uh, cable. Now, if you're not going to run two peripherals in a by eight by eight configuration and you just want by 16, then you can get just the by 16 cable and it'll just give you the one expansion slot. But it does give you, you know, three slots of physical room here. So if you want to run a triple slot graphics card in your ITX system, you totally can. And look how much clearance you have here. Now, in my particular case, the ribbon cable for the PCIe was just a little short. So I had to route it sort of between the motherboard and the case, which is a little tricky with the Gigabyte X570 because it's got the rear IO backplate on it. But I just routed it behind here so I'd have a little more slack on the cable. And now my uh, PCIe cable is not pulled really tight because you don't want it to be super tight. And uh, with this, this kind of routing, screwing in the little shelf for the card at the bottom, no problem. Getting the power supply mounted was no problem. And the Sliger cases come with a cable for routing this power connection to out here this hole at the back of the machine. So this is where your power cable will plug in and then it'll be routed up and around and over here. You do want to route that power cable away from the PCIe ribbon cable if you want. I mean, this silver, it means it's insulated, but you really want to run that power cable as far away from everything else as you can. So you can see here's the top and then here's like sort of the superstructure that the top bolts into. And you can see we've got a really amazing spot for the handle to join. I mean, this is steel. Just. It's, uh, it's solid, it's really solid. Now, obviously we want it to exhaust the hot air out of the top of the case. So I'm gonna mount it rads, like the rad side of the top of the case because I don't really wanna see the RGB. I'm gonna see it no matter what I do, no matter how this build shakes out, but it's fine. Seems like that's gonna work. We've got plenty of clearance, not plenty, but enough clearance for our tubes and power cord and and that sort of thing, so I think we'll be all right. Now look how much room you have for a GPU. That is utterly ridiculous. And this nice sort of chimney exhaust thing, that's also gonna work pretty well. If you wanna run multiple three and a half inch drives in here, you can. If you wanna run six two and a half inch drives, two in the front, four in the bottom, you can. It just depends on what combination of hardware you want. If you wanna have a, a, a pigtail where, you know, the power socket hangs out the back, they've got a cover for that. If you'd rather have you know, a proper power socket, which is what I've opted for. Then you got this, and this will just handily cover that hole there. Now, we're pretty much good to go on this case. I've got to mount the cooler, the actual cold plate, I guess, to the CPU, do some testing, install an operating system, that kind of thing. And this is gonna be an ITX system with two X8 slots. But if for some reason you didn't wanna give up your eight lanes, you could also reconfigure this to be PCI Express by four and PCI Express by 16. You can break out the M.2 slot on the back of this motherboard to an X4 PCIe slot. You have to order the cables uh, from eBay or Alibaba or something like that, but it is doable, I've done it before. And that this case is so readily adaptable for modding is one of the reasons that I'm really excited about it because being able to run that kind of connectivity in this box is, is sort of mind blowing. Now know what you're thinking. Will the most ridiculous graphics card ever conceived fit in there? I don't know, let's find out. Now what I like about the 2070 Super and the 2080 Super Extreme is they've got a lot of outputs. I've got the 2070 here. You guys may remember from some of the videos that we've had. This is a two and a half, almost three slot card. Two slots on the back. It's a hefty, hefty card. And to even, you know, think about stuffing this thing in an ITX case is bonkers. Does this build have your attention yet? It's ITX, triple slot. Yes, you can run by eight by eight if you so desire. Got six terabytes of flash and 32 gigabytes of memory. 
How is this possible? Sliger. <laughs> Sliger is how this is possible. This is the Sliger SM550. This is an ITX case. It's basically no compromises. I've got a 240 millimeter uh, closed loop cooler in there. That's the Corsair H100i. It's like the new version. I've got the 16 core 3950X. I've got 32 gigabytes of Trident Z memory in it. I've got the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme triple slot graphics card in there. I've also got a PCI Express bifurcation cable that'll let me run two slots off of an ITX uh, motherboard in a by eight by eight configuration. That's something Sliger sells. You can even buy that individually if you're looking to do a build like this. This build is so over the top. I could even have three slots in here if I really wanted to, X4, X8, X8, or X16, X4. That's not with the, the cables that you can get from Sliger. That's going a little off the reservation, but uh, yeah. I've got a four terabyte NVMe drive right here in the front. Our Gigabyte Aorus ITX motherboard has two NVMe slots, one on the top, one in the rear. One of them, I've got a PCI Express by four Aorus NVMe in there. That's two terabytes, the big copper slug heatsink. And then the other interface that's on the back of the motherboard, I've got a cable routing through here behind the graphics card and to the, this four terabyte, two and a half inch drive in the front. You can get these up to 15 terabytes in the commercial space. These are on eBay right now for less than hundred dollars a gig and they don't slow down when they get full. So it's a, and there's still three years of Intel warranty left. So yeah, this is nuts. Yeah, this is the, uh, the dual vented side panel configuration. I think that's what I'm gonna recommend if you're gonna go with something like this. You could mount the power supply either way and maybe get away with only having one vented side panel. You could also install some fans in the bottom. I'm surprised there's, there's as much room as there is. There's also an adapter that will hold three and a half inch drives that will fit in the bottom so you could get four more three and a half inch drives in addition to the two regular three and a half inch slots that are in the, in the very front of the case. Now, those commercial NVMe drives are double height. So those are gonna take up both slots in the front, but I can still put in two more and I don't physically have enough uh, PCI Express connectivity to be able to do that because this is an ITX platform. But I can split one of my M.2 off into a PCIe uh, you know, peripheral if I want to. That's what I've done with this. Those are technically U.2, two and a half inch devices, but Intel sells a cable that's low profile. So it works perfectly fine behind the, uh, behind the motherboard, the way that the, the cutout for this is. I think this is probably one of the most over the top Sliger builds that there is. And this being as compact as it is, is a relative joy to build in. I like building in small cases. I did the, the Ryzen 1700 build in the Encase M1 when it first came out. It was like, oh, eight cores, it's such a tiny case. It's so ridiculous. But with the seven nanometer and AMD's recommendation of using an all-in-one, you know, closed loop cooler, this is still super tiny. This is still super tiny and still capable of having a handle. So you can carry this thing around, you know, it's basically a glorified lunchbox. I probably would use a smaller, like 2.25 or two and a half slot graphics card. Could be moved to the outer slot, which would free up this inner slot for a PCI Express capture card or something like that. So if you wanted to build like a portable, super high performance 4K60, you could throw in one of those Magewell capture cards that has multiple HDMI inputs and still have X8 lanes left over for your graphics card. You can edit on this and this would be really high performance. I mean, the 3950X, from AMD is one of the highest performance systems out there, one of the highest performance system, CPUs out there for video editing, whether that's DaVinci Resolve or uh, you know, the Adobe Suite. We did the benchmarks for that and, and were able to demonstrate that. I've still got to hook up my front panel connections and actually run through some more testing for this system, but it's got plenty of breathability. This is an awesome little system. Again, big thanks to Sliger for supplying the case. I supplied everything else, so, but still this build is bananas. So crazy. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a level one build. 16 cores and a lunchbox with six terabytes of flash. That's crazy.